So now we will move into the front end and we will go, as I mentioned before, to index.cshtml. Let's go there. And we have some default code which we do not need, so I will just delete all that and we will get to business. Now we have that deleted, we can move on and actually write some useful code here. So first of all we need to establish a connection and to do that you simply construct a WebSocket. So you write variable, you declare a variable, let's call that test socket this time, equals new web web socket and I'm doing something wrong as you can see, I'm not doing that in the script, I need a script here. So I write the script and now I will declare that socket, so let's write variable test socket equals new web web socket now let's see it's not suggesting anything for some reason we will see why later so let's do that and we need the actual URL here the actual link to the web socket we will display that later so we should have our web socket ready and now we actually need some kind of uh, elements in the HTML. So let's do a couple of things let's do. First of all, let's do a button. So let's do a paragraph. And then in the paragraph, let's do the button. And on the button, on the button, we will actually send some message to the socket. So let's call that send and then we will create a a function here in the script in the script we will create a function and we will send a very simple text message there now we also need some kind of a text holder so let's create a paragraph and let's say answer because we will be receiving an answer from websocket so let's do answer and then the next one let's do paragraph and let's call it ID answer box simply answer box and in this one we will actually display our answer so this socket web socket it can have four different events the first one is on open the second one is on close the third one is on error and then the fourth one, the most important one, is on message. So we will actually be only doing the on message one because we need to see the message. We are the ones, they aren't really that much useful. They are useful but you don't get any data from them. So you can only see that something has opened or closed or there was an error. You won't even see most of the time what kind of an error it was. So it's pretty much pointless for us to look into them. So let's just do the socket, the socket on, on message. On message equals function double tab, you can do double tab on here and you get your function. So on this function we will kind of read the message. You don't need to have any readers in JavaScript, you just access what you get. So to do that we will access the document, the answer box. So let's do document get element by ID and then the answer box the ID will be Let's copy that just in case. Copy that and let's do inner HTML or you could do inner text, it doesn't matter. Plus equals and then let's do a new line backslash n and then received received plus you will add your data that you have received and to do that you need to pass on a parameter here let's call that e 
So as you can see, this function will have a parameter which will contain the data. So let's do e dot data. So that data will be the text which you will actually receive. And basically that's it. We don't need anything else here yet. Now what we need to do is we need to create the send function. So let's do send. Let's do function actually and let's call that send. You can call it anything you want. You don't have to call it send. So now let's go back to the button and let's do on click on click and let's do send on click send on click yeah, like that so it will send something now we just need to actually send that something so to do that again it's very simple very basic in JavaScript it's very easy to use so let's do test socket and simply write send and as you can see you can have string you can have array buffer blob array buffer view so you can send files and you can send text so we will be sending text and we will be sending just simple text let's say we are sending test text just like that we won't be actually inserting anything there's no point in doing that so we have that and now the most important part we need that uh, link that URL here in the web socket so what you need to do here you need to find your local host port and to do that you go to the the project you right click on that you go to properties and then here you go to debug you go to debug tab and in the debug tab you go to the bottom and you find your app URL with your port so let's copy that let's copy that and also you can enable SSL so that would be a different port we won't be doing that and if we go back to the index.cshtml we will place that here and we will change the HTTP to WS and if you are using secure socket layers you would do W S S double S so you do W S for a simple connection W S S for a secure connection and now that we have everything we can actually launch it and see if it actually works so whilst it launching let's review what we have done we have set up the startup.cs file and instead of putting the, the actual web socket we did it in a different class and you would do this if you would actually need to send something through that web so socket from a different part of your application now that is quite a common practice you might send some data up the link and you, you might do something with that data, you might have a delay and you would access that web socket and you, send, you would send something back through some totally different method. So let's see if we can do the sending. Let's click on the send. And it doesn't seem to be working for some reason, but there's nothing to worry about. Let's just go to the tools, the developer tools. Let's see if we can actually find something some problem here so we have some in the console and we have some unexpected error now I can already see what the error is if you remember we have declared in the startup.cs we have declared that the path has to be slash ws and we don't have it here so let's do slash ws let's save that and let's try to reload the browser try to reload it and let's try to send it doesn't work again let's see what's wrong here let's get back to the developer tools let's see so as you can see the browser did not load the reload for some reason it sometimes happens uh, with, with this Visual Studio 2019 preview that I am using here so you have to launch everything from new 
which can be quite annoying at times, but uh, I would believe that we will fix it once the Visual Studio 2019 comes out as a full version, not a preview version. So let's wait for a while, let's let it launch, and we have it here, let's see if we can send it, and yes we can. So we've sent the text, and we have received test text which we have sent. Now, since you have those basics now, those fundamentals, you can go and do some practice. So, what I would suggest to do is to actually open more than one WebSocket at the same time. It can be quite tricky, it requires some experience, so whilst you're doing that, you'll gain some of that experience. So, if you go to the Visual Studio, if you go to your startup, you could do, you could simply just uh, copy this and do OSIF with these, but I would suggest uh, just doing is WebSocket and then in that if, create another ifs, checking for different paths and therefore opening different WebSocket for different uh, paths. So you could have WS1, WS2 and so on, or whatever you want to name those paths. And with that, I would suggest creating some controllers, sending some messages through controllers, as you would do in any HTTP request, and then from that HTTP request, actually send some data back through the WebSocket. So do some training, gain some experience, and the WebSocket will be a piece of cake. So good luck with your ventures.